Now let's have a look at Ant. Previously you've seen how we've used Maven. We also installed Ant. Ant is a, another build tool, a command line tool for helping us do the build process. Uh, so let's search for Apache Ant. Now with all these tools, they're open source, there's a lot of documentation online. I, When I wrote the Selenium Simplified book, the Maven integration with uh, WebDriver and Selenium, it, it just wasn't there yet. So everything I did with was explained in Ant. So if you read Selenium Simplified, we cover Ant an awful lot in there and show how you build an Ant file to control your tests and configure it. What I'm going to do very quickly here is just run through what you need to do in order to get Ant running and I'll show you a sample build.xml file for Ant and you can start making the decision about which one you're going to learn, which one you're going to use. Maven, if you keep your project standard, can be a very, very easy way to get up and running. Maven is clearly the fastest way of starting with WebDriver Selenium in the IDE because you just add a single dependency into your POM file. Ant requires a little bit more work and you need to download more libraries. You, If you want to do anything more unconventional in your build process, Ant might help you, but understanding how both work, you then have more flexibility. So I'm going to quickly cover Ant. Now in the spirit of I've set a lot of this stuff up already, this should be a little bit faster. So I'm just going to show you quickly what we have with Ant. So in order to create Ant, what I've done So I've just created a folder called ant test and you can see here I've just copied in the My First Selenium IntelliJ Maven folder. And the main reason I've done that is it has the source code so I don't have to rewrite that. All I've had to do to get ant running is create a build.xml file which I will show you and explain and a libs folder. Now we didn't need a libs folder, we didn't need any external libs with Maven because we had a POM file which explained the dependencies. You saw the two dependencies that we'd used in the POM file. We had a dependency on JUnit and we had a dependency on the Selenium packages. So what I've done is in the libs folder I have downloaded the JUnit jar and the Selenium server standalone jar. So let me show you where I got those from. So the JUnit jar I got from if I could type the JUnit homepage. And they have a download JUnit link. If I scroll down to the first one, the most recent one, that has a jar. There we go. So I downloaded this JUnit 410 jar, the basic jar for using JUnit. And I put that in my libs folder. And I downloaded what I needed for Selenium. So if I head off to the Selenium HQ on downloads, this, the Selenium server, formerly the Selenium RC server, and it's, it's pretty much everything for Selenium and WebDriver packaged together into a single jar so you've only got one thing to worry about. So I downloaded that. Now what I tend to do is when I download the Selenium server standalone, I create a new folder for each version, which I can then swap between in the build file. So you can see here, the folder is called Selenium underscore 2.2.5.0, which is the same as the version number on the Selenium standalone jar. So let's have a quick look at the build file. With Ant, Ant looks for a build.xml file. Now you can pass in a different parameter with a different file name, but Ant by default looks for a build.xml file. 
Now this may look confusing. So I'm going to summarize it fairly quickly just to show what we're doing. Now in Ant you have to create a project. Then give it a default target to run. The targets are defined in here. I set up a bunch of properties that I can reuse down here. So I've got a libs folder. I want all the source files to be compiled into the target folder. When I run JUnit I want to put in the JUnit results folder and JUnit report folder. You can see here I'm creating a variable to hold the Selenium version to make it easier for swapping between different versions of Selenium later on. So I look for, when I look for the Selenium server jar, I'm looking in the libs folder that I've defined up here, in a subfolder, which is defined as the Selenium underscore with the Selenium version number. Then I look for the Selenium server standalone with the version number. So if I want to swap between different versions of Selenium, if I have used the same folder structure, all I have to do is change this single value here and it will pick up the correct version of the Selenium libs for me. I'm specifying a JUnit class path for the libraries and source files that I want to use when I'm compiling and running the uh, unit tests. I have a target that deletes all the directories to clean everything down when it starts. It's equivalent to the maven clean command essentially. Then I have a command to make the directories, then compile them, which will use the path structure that I've defined further up here. I've got a task to run the JUnit reports. Now you don't have to understand this. The build file is included in the documentation that supports this course. This build file is essentially just a hacked version of the one that we write when you work through the Selenium Simplified book. So everything is explained in there. But all that's really important is that now if I go to the directory and I do ant on its own, it will pick up this build file. It will run the default target, which we have defined as run all. It will run this. This says it depends on compile. So before doing this, it will do the compile step. The compile step does a clean and a make to before it. So this basically runs everything. Then we run the JUnit tests. I run everything that's compiled under this particular package, which you saw me create when we wrote the test. And then we build the JUnit reports. So I have in console created a new tab for the ant test to take me pretty much in there. So everything is in the my first Selenium IntelliJ Maven directory. Do a DIR in here. You can see the build.xml file. So if I do ant, it's cleaning everything down, it's compiling everything, then it's running the tests. And what it has also done is in the JUnit report folder, it has got an HTML version of all the reports. If you were bringing this into your continuous integration process, you would just call the ant process as normal and then pull in the JUnit reports as the artifacts into your, your project or the, the JUnit plugin and then you can see what tests you've run and what the, the results were. So that's a, a whistle-stop tour of bringing Ant in and running the test from Ant.